Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar, it is the Saturday Report with Colt Sebastian Taylor. Good morning and welcome once again to the Saturday Report with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur possible speaker of the United States House of Representatives. And welcome to the Saturday Report, I guess, with me, where I'm talking about the news every single week here. So thank you so much for listening. I I enjoy coming back here and whatnot and talking to you and giving you some new updates and whatnot. And of course, you can engage with me on a variety of fantastic social media channels. Uh, for example, the Twitter, the Instagram, the uh, Facebook, the Counter Social, the uh, Threads, as well as Cameo. I'm on there. And then uh, I don't really do Twitch anymore, but maybe I'll do that now come winter time. But anyways, find me there. I'm mostly on Twitter right now. No, I'm not going to call it X. It's Twitter. And then, of course, you need to follow ColtSebastianTaylor.com and subscribe and follow to um, Anchor.fm slash Taylor. All right, my friends. Let's get started with this week's Saturday Report. First up, I'm not going to talk about it too long other than offering some comments about it. Um, there's still no Speaker of the House in Congress. Now, for those who slept through uh, social studies, um, the Speaker of the House is the guy who's in charge of the lower House of Congress, the House of Representatives. Now, the Speaker is selected by a majority of members sitting in the House, and for the last 200 and some years, whoever generally has the most people in there gets to pick the Speaker. Well, there has been no speaker for over two weeks, and uh, Congress can't do anything without a speaker. It's like, you know, you need, you know, the, you need someone in charge to do anything in there, and when there's no one in charge, you can't do anything except put someone in charge. <clears throat> and um, they, this is as at this time of this recording, uh, they're doing a third vote inside the uh, House of Representatives right now, uh, right now. Uh, well, first, they were going to do Steve Scalise, but he didn't run away to the floor. Now, Jim Jordan, and Jim Jordan has failed probably three times to become the Speaker of the House. And I find that hilarious because uh, Jim Jordan is a big old D-bag, and he absolutely deserves this continual humiliation. And also, there is absolutely no reason why he should be the Speaker of the House. He would be the worst person to be there. Now, here's the thing. They can't, the Republicans can't agree on a speaker. You have to have a majority. So if no one reaches that magic number, they just vote again and again and again and again and again and again until they find one. In January of this year, they voted 15 times. 15 times. Um, so even though this is going to be posted Saturday, uh, will there be a Speaker of the House? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Um, it's just complete dysfunction. Complete dysfunction. And um, I don't know why anyone would, would think that these folks have any business running the country if they can't even select somebody to run the House of Representatives. Uh, fun fact, fun fact, uh, the Speaker of the House does not necessarily need to be a member of the House of Representatives. True story. So, um, some of the votes not for Jim Jordan have been people not in Congress uh, in um, January last year, of uh, this year, when there were 15 votes down. Trump got a few votes, and uh, this round of voting, a few folks that are former Congress people are, have been getting random votes as well. So, uh, I am available to be the Speaker of the House, just so if anyone's listening, uh, I don't know if my congressperson will put my name into the have the mix, but uh, I am more than happy to, if called upon, I will serve. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's going. That's going right there. Yep, 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 yep. Moving along with some other political news, it's a Kanye West 2024 update. As you may remember, I uh, was very interested in Kanye 2020, basically how easy, 
how easy it was to uh, get on ballots. Amazingly easy. But apparently this week, according to Rolling Stone, uh, that um, E, Kanye West, the Easter, is not a candidate for office in 2024, according to an attorney representing Kanye West. Now, not surprisingly, uh, this, of course, was after Kanye's campaign, this, and this may surprise you, um, not very well organized. Uh, he originally hired um, right-wing political commentator Milo Yippa Papo, whatever his name is, and white supremacist Nick Fuentes, and just, just rabid anti-Semite Nick Fuentes onto his team. Needless to say, uh, that turned a lot of heads. Uh, Kanye, as you may remember, went down to visit Donald Trump and asked him to be his vice president, uh, uh, and politely declined. Uh, last December, Milo was fired, uh, but then he, uh, fired Fuentes in May and brought Milo back on. In June, he reportedly asked a homeless man to be his campaign manager. Uh, maybe that's Kevin McCarthy. Hard to say. Uh, and now he's married. He has a new wife and is doing a new album. And apparently uh, his handlers have gotten him focused on that. And he's lost interest of becoming Ka President Kanye West in 2024. Uh, as you may remember, um, he uh, he ran in several states in uh, uh, 2020 um, that didn't, didn't get any electoral votes. Unfortunately, didn't get any elector electoral votes. Um... And, uh, oh gosh, what was, what was, uh, his, what was his total vote count? I feel like I want to say he came in eighth place, uh, out of all the candidates that are running, uh, 2024 vote totals for president. Let's see. I'm sure there's a, uh, I'm sure there's a, we can, we can pull that up real quickly. Uh, bu 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 uh, not really, huh? Go figure. Oh, there we are. Um, yeah, he didn't crack the top four. He didn't crack the top four. Uh, Joe Jorgensen for Libertarians and Howie Hawkins, um, um, came in in third and fourth, respectively. And then Kanye West for the birthday party, as you remember, as you may remember, came in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh place. I'm sorry. Came in seventh place for, um, seventh place for that. Uh, also beating out Don Blankenship of the Constitution Party, Brock Pierce as Independent, and Brian Carroll for American Solidarity. Unfortunately, could not overcome Gloria La, La, La Viva and Rocky De La Fuente, who beat him out just by a 10,000 or so votes. So, no Yeezy 2024, my friends. I'm sorry. You'll just have to look forward to the Easter's uh, new album coming out. I don't know when. Moving on to some uh, sad news. Actor Burt Young passed away this week uh, at the age of 83. 83? Yeah, 83 in Los Angeles, California. Uh, he was best known as Pauly from the Rocky series. Um, Adrian's brother, uh, appeared in a lot of other movies as well, including, uh, Chinatown, The Gambler, The Killer Elite, Convoy, Uncle Joe Shannon, Once Upon a Time in America, The Pope at Greenwich, Village, A Summer to Remember, Back to School, another great movie with Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield, where he played his driver, uh, Last Exit to Brooklyn, Mickey Blue Eyes, Win Win, and Bottom of the Ninth, the last one coming in 2019, worked, worked all the way up until his... Um, till his passing, and actually has two movies in production right now um, that don't know when exactly he's going to be there. But uh, not only was he an actor, he's also actually a very good painter. Um, his art has apparently been uh, displayed in galleries all over the world. Um, all the paintings you would see in uh, the movie Rocky Balboa, uh, there's some paintings hanging in Rocky's bar. Uh, some of those were actually painted by him. Painted by him. So he's actually a real, real, real good painter as well. He was. Uh, he also was a published author, including two film screenplays and a 400-page historical novel called Endings. He wrote two stage plays, 
SOS, and uh, the other play was A Letter to Alicia and the New York Government from a Man with a Bullet in His Head. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he unfortunately passed away. Uh, he was in some great movies between 1970 and uh, all the way up to now. Uh, best known for uh, the Rocky movies. Uh, also, Back to School, that's where I, I know him from a lot. And, uh, yeah, he's just in a lot of different movies. So, uh, 83. Uh, also, also, just as a note, he did earn an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his uh, first time he appeared as Pauly in the first Rocky movie. So, uh, unfortunately, fortunately passed away this week at the age of 83. Um, I suggest checking out one of his old movies. He was a talented, not only on screen, but also an amazingly talented painter. Next up, in an update to a story I had done two weeks ago, as you may remember, I talked about the death of journalist, uh, journalist uh, Josh uh, Kruger. Um, unfortunately, since that, some unfortunate and disturbing revelations have come out. Um... It appears, it appears that the person who uh, shot him uh, was a young man uh, who apparently may or may not have been in a relationship with him when the young man was 15 and may or may not have gotten him hooked on meth and meth was found at his apartment. So uh, he was well known with struggling with drug use. And it does seem like he had a big old relapse for the last few years. And no one, I guess, if they were aware of it, they did not know how bad it was. And this situation of his murder looks like it was a um, lot, lot more going on with that than just a simple home invasion or a simple domestic uh, dispute and whatnot. So... Um, yeah, shocking, shocking revelations about that. Um, there were going to be some memorials for him held at several prominent locations in Philadelphia, but all those have been canceled. They were canceled last week, and, um, I don't think they've caught up with the guy yet. Um, his mother is saying that, uh, he panicked and that, uh, Josh Kruger was going to release some pornographic pictures about him if he didn't do something and they got into an argument and then he got shot. So, um, police are still looking for him. Uh, investigation's ongoing. Police is a little, police are a bit tight-lipped about it. I guess they're still checking things out. But, um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I had no idea that any of that was going on. Like, I only knew him on Twitter, but... That is uh, an unfortunate development in that story and whatnot. So, if new comes out, I'll definitely bring it to you. But since uh, I had opined upon him a few weeks ago, and then this came out, uh, as a responsible journalist myself, I guess I should uh, bring that stuff to you. So, um, strange story, sad story. Um, hopefully, it comes to some sort of resolution. But uh, very, very unfortunate uh, apparently his family was thought that he had fallen a bit on hard times. Didn't realize how bad that was. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I'll keep tabs on it, but uh, there has been no new information in like a week and a half. So, I don't know if this will get the amount of coverage it should, but it is what it is. I don't control newspapers. Changing gears for going to social media where Elon Musk is apparently planning on charging everyone who uses Twitter, now that he calls it X, calls it X, Twitter, a dollar a year to use the platform uh, as the only way to fight the bots because apparently, um, apparently uh, if you, uh, I guess, I guess bots don't have dollars. And so he's going to charge people one dollar a year to do things like post and repost basically basically use Twitter would be a dollar a year. Um far cry from when the it was a free website with actually employees working hard to maintain it and it was worth uh forty some billion dollars. Not worth that anymore. So as a way to not figure out how to do it without, you know, charging people, he's just gonna charge people a buck. 
So apparently this is um, going to testing this out in New Zealand and the Philippines. Not sure why those two countries are the first ones to endure this, but he's going to test that out, and that works really well. He's going to do that throughout the entire system. Um, I can say, with some authority, I'm not giving a billionaire a dollar a year to use something he broke because he got mad people were making fun of him. That transphobic blood diamond mine owner. No, I am not. I am not going to pay a dollar. I'm not going to pay a dollar to use Twitter. So, so, my friends, plenty of other places to find me. I'll be elsewhere and whatnot. Not a big deal. I don't have... Now, listen, if I was... If I had millions of followers and was getting money from stuff, sure, maybe. But I'm not, so the answer's no. No, it's not. So, um, that's going on. Also, and on the Twitter front, uh, the European Union is starting to give him fines for not taking off terrible things going on in the Middle East, both misinformation and graphic videos. And so he's considering just removing Twitter from Europe altogether. So, um, you know, the guy's doing a bang up job. Bang up job. Um, apparently, advertisers are coming back. In fact, even Nike is now advertising again on Twitter. Uh, what this, that statement was left out is they spent $10 in three months. So technically they're back, but technically speaking, um, they're, they're not spending a whole lot of money. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious. I mean, listen, do you use a lot of the Twitter? I mean, I use it for news stuff and following and commenting and making fun of people, but I, that's not a dollar's worth of content for me. I can get that content elsewhere. I would explore other apps to do that. I'm not paying a billionaire a dollar to use something that was free. All right? Sorry. So sorry. Sorry, Elmo. Not doing it. Not doing it. And I encourage you, my friends, not to do it either. There's plenty of other, uh, plenty of other, plenty of other of, uh, social media channels out there that you can go on that, honestly, a bit more well run. A bit more well run, I, I would say. I would say. My friends, as you know, I like to have a little little nip nip, a little sip sip of the whiskey. And among my favorite, favorite brands of whiskey is the Manitani Stillworks based out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. That is where their distillery is. Uh, they have some of the best tasting whiskeys and gins and rums I have ever had. Whiskey is their uh, primary, uh, pri their primary uh, uh, output, the primary production. They do other things as well. Uh, also vodka. And, uh, I, I just adore these people. I'm actually out right now of their whiskey and I need to swing by, need to swing by and, um, and get some because it is just fantastic stuff. They have a delightful collection of of whiskeys right now. I mean, I'm just taking a look there. They've got their apple brandy, their maple whiskey, a wonderful, wonderful fall, wonderful fall, uh, delicious, uh, delicious drink. Uh, they have four grain whiskey. They have select four grain whiskey. They have peated single malt whiskey, fair is finished in a sherry ca cast. Delicious. Uh, honey whiskey. Amazing. Four grain white whiskey. Also good. Uh, their, their signature vodka, three bitches vodka, which is, has three dogs on it. They give uh, proceeds to uh, local charities. Uh, American gin, gin finished in oak barrels, and uh, American gold rum. And they put out special. They put out. Uh, they put out uh, special uh, whiskeys, small batch whiskeys throughout throughout the uh, the uh, the uh, year. You can order them online, and orders more than a hundred dollars. Uh, is, is shipped free. So, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll just order some online and have some shipped to me. That would be a delightful idea. A delightful idea. But anyways, they're based out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania, but they have tasting rooms in Passyunk, Ardmore, Fishtown, um, uh, uh, which I have visited. Delightfully wonderful cocktails. Uh, although my favorite place to go is to go to the actual distillery. Um, um, I haven't been there in a while because I've been pretty busy, but when I have gone there, they give tours on the weekends 
and uh, you can sign up. They have bottling nights. I think they still have that. I, you may want to call to make sure. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just rambling off here. Stuff that I knew to be true at one time. I feel like it still is. I feel like it still is. But anyways, you need to check them out. Definitely check out the products. The Manatani still works in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, tell them that Colt Sebastian Taylor sent you. Uh, you won't get anything. Uh, and then they may or may not remember me. But it'll be pretty funny if they do. But anyways, check them out. Grab a bottle. Support local Pennsylvania distillers. And uh, they're the best. The best in the biz. Best in the biz. The man time still works. They're great. Moving on to Netflix. Yes, that's right, my friends. Netflix. Once again, hiking prices on its subscriptions. Go figure. Uh, its basic plan will now be $12, up from $10. Premium plan will be $23, up from $20. Uh, Netflix's ad-supported plan will apparently still cost seven dollars and uh the last time netflix rose raised prices in the united states was in january 2022 in a statement in a statement netflix said as we deliver more value to our members we occasionally ask them to pay a bit more our starting price is extremely competitive with other streamers at 6.99 per month in the u.s for example it's much less than the average price of a single movie ticket yeah you think um yeah, so it's they're just raising prices once again. Uh, Netflix reported a third quarter revenue of eight point five four billion dollars, up from seven point nine. That is that's a twenty percent twenty percent rise of their uh, profits. Still refused to pay actors and writers uh, a fair share in their uh, residuals from streaming, which is barely anything. Uh, they did add 8.8 .8 million subscribers in the third quarter, uh, adding them because they began blocking password sharing, something they encouraged early on in their in their, in their business, but now are actively blocking people from um, sharing passwords to other people. I guess so. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 that that's that's why they're adding 8.8 .8 million subscribers. Uh, they're not adding new people. They're just kicking people off of password sharing, and then I guess people still want to watch Netflix shows, so that's what's going on there. They're going that way. So that is why. So once once that tapers off, when they're, they're kicked everyone off, they're not going to grow like that anymore. So, you know, I guess that's why they're raising prices, so they can sort of lock in that profit, I guess. Uh, streaming. Streamers. Streaming. Streaming. What, what, what a scam. What a scam. I like, I don't mind paying for that, whatnot, but like, they're not paying actors and writers their fair share of streaming royalties. So, like, they're just raising money for themselves. Okay. They're, they're, yeah. Anyways, anyways, I'll go off on a tangent on that one. But, anyways, if you have a Netflix basic or premium plan, you will be paying some more money pretty, pretty, Pretty soon. Next up, my friends, we go to space, specifically Mars, where scientists have detected the largest earthquake on there they have ever recorded at a 4.7. Uh, well, not that it's not an earthquake; it's a Mars quake. Apparently, that's the term they like to use. Um, was recorded last year. They did some um, 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 some more studies because Mars quakes on Mars are obviously caused by uh, internal plate tectonics or impacts by meteors and asteroids and stuff like that. But um, they checked all the footage, they looked at the satellites, and they don't think something hit Mars to cause this impact. Uh, they couldn't find a crater or a fresh new like blast zone, so they think it was an internal Mars quake. Um, and it's uh, unusual, it's unusual um, that uh, this seismic activity is um, um, different because it's usually caused by impacts, but it occurred at a weird part of the planet as well. Uh, researchers are still looking at the data, but the study s thinks that there was a dip-slip fault. Now, it's not a dance move, um, but it's a type of earthquake along the mid-crest originating from uh, between 11 and 17 miles in depth. 
in depth, in, like underneath the surface. So, um, a, still learning a whole lot about Mars and whatnot. And uh, it was uh, a big old earthquake, not caused by an impact of space rocks. So, I always like the Mars story. So that came across my desk. Had to share it with you. I'm sure you're big Mars quake fans as well. So. Now you can bring that up at a dinner conversation. Uh, like, oh, did you hear? There's a large Mars quake on Mars, a 4.7, not caused by an impact of an asteroid. Then you can say, I heard that from Colt Sebastian Taylor. See, I'm just helping you make small talk. And if that if I could do that for you, I consider my mission successful. Returning to entertainment news, uh, there has been for the last uh, little bit, uh, rumors that The Office will be rebooted. Popular NBC series that went from 2000 and, um, I think 2005 to 2013, starring many folks that have gone on to have pretty good movie careers, including Steve Carell, uh, John Krasinski, uh, Rain Wilson, amongst others and whatnot. But according to, um, the showrunner, which he did not create the show, Ricky Gervais created the show in the United Kingdom. Showrunner is kind of produces it in charge of the show here. Uh, Great Daniel says there's no plans to reboot the popular NBC uh, sitcom. Uh, however, um, according to um, uh, to to an NBC uh, to an NBC uh, executive. Uh, he said that uh, he'd be welcoming, he would welcome Greg Daniels back with open arms if he ever came to NBC with an idea or whatnot. According to Daniels, he said, uh, Greg Daniels says, well, I think it's very speculative. The fact that it kind of blew up based on one line in a Puck piece, Puck is a, a news outfit, was kind of cool, I guess, in a sense that the fans still care a lot. But the thing I would say is when there's something to announce, I will definitely announce it. Um, he said, he went on to say, uh, okay, that, that was the same quote again. Uh, but, like, according to Susan Rover in February 2023, uh, she said, whatever Great Daniels wants to do, I'm standing by with open arms. Uh, NBC Universal paid $500 million, half a billion dollars, half a billion dollars, to reacquire the streaming rights of the comedy in 2020. Um, it was on, I think, Netflix or Hulu, but now it's on NBC's own streaming um, outfit and whatnot. Um, and uh, now you can only watch it through them. So they reacquired reacquired the streaming rights for a half a billion dollars. Not too bad. Uh, Greg Daniels, you also know him for some of his other works, such as King of the Hill and Parks and Rec, another fantastic show. And... Um, yeah, so uh, I would say though I would say just 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 a note. First, let's say one to three seasons of The Office. Not all the jokes hold up over time. Some of them are like, oh boy, mm, not sure about that. But uh, just 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 so you know, just just be prepared for yourself. That 2005 was a different time. All those years ago and whatnot. But, um, anyways, uh, so if you're hoping for an office reboot, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. It is not currently in the mix. We now go to science again, where a new species of shark has been discovered in Kentucky. You, uh, yes. No, no, no. It was a fossil. Not like a live shark, but... Uh, fossil, uh, records has indicated that there is a new... Uh, new shark species that had never been seen before, discovered in Lairs of Rock at the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky, and was discovered on October 11th, which, as you may know, I'm sure everyone knows, is National Fossil Day. Yes, fossils have their own day. Scientists found a new species, a Peta Lundart shark, uh, a type of shark with petal-shaped teeth. Uh, the discovery was uh, found in the Steve Genevieve Formation Rock Lair at Mammoth Cave National Park, which is about 85 miles south of Louisville, or Louisville. Um, the new shark species, named Skir hmm, Stregoglus tolosone, uh, was discovered from spoon-like teeth found in the cave wall and ceiling. Uh, to quote the Mammoth Cave Superintendent Barclay Timble, 
Quote, we are excited to find out the discovery of our first new shark species at Mammoth Cave on National Fossil Day. Teams of geologists, uh, paleontologists, uh, park staff volunteers have been at work, hard at work, deep in the cave, identifying and collecting fossils since the um, paleo paleontological resource inventory began in 2019. Their important research allows us to better understand the scope, significance, distribution, and management issues associated with the fossil record found in Mammoth Cave. Um, in November 2019, uh, John Paul Honet, a shark, uh, shark fossil specialist working with the Maryland National Capital Parks and Planning Commission, uh, teamed up with the NPS Paleontology Program to identify the shark fossil in the park. And in the process of identifying it, they realized they realized it was uh, a new species. Uh, the species Stergotolus tolsone tolsone is named after Kelly Tolson, a guide at Mammoth Cave National Park who provided exceptional field support to the collaboration. Oh well, that's that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. You, if you helped out, you got a fossil named after you. That's pretty cool. Um, Tolson discovered the essential fossil sites in remote and challenging locations, according to the press release. Access is limited due to the rugged terrain. Uh, the fossils are found in cave walls or ceilings and are collected using small handheld tools by researchers and volunteers who climb long distances on hands, knees, and bellies. That sounds awful. That sounds like an awful thing to do. No, thank you. I don't want to do that at all. Uh, Mammoth Cave Natural Park in Kentucky, as you may know, is the world's most extensive cave systems, over 400 miles long. Uh, prehistoric people used it for shelter and resources. It was rediscovered by settlers in the 1800s and used as a saltpeter mine until the end of the War of 1812. And now it's one of the most popular places to visit in Kentucky. Uh, again, though, Stay with the guides. If you get lost there, they may not find you, and you may become a fossil yourself. So there's some good advice for you, for me to you. Don't get lost in Mammoth National Caves. We continue with more news from the ocean. According to the um, National Ocean and At Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, 80% uh, of ships are speeding through go-slow zones set by environmental regulators to help protect uh, whale species along the U.S. East Coast. Uh, the endangered North Atlantic right whales is uh, being affected quite a bit by it. Uh, apparently there are only uh, 340 whales left, and uh, being struck by ships is the number one cause of death. Uh, they analyzed boat speeds between 2020 and 2022 in slow zones, and found that 84% of boats speed through mandatory slow zones, and 82% speed through voluntary slow zones. Uh, NOAA created a 10-knot limit for vessels over 65 feet in 2008. Apparently, people were just blowing right through them. Blowing right through them. Um, according to Ocean Campaign Director Gib Brogan, who urged regulars to boost enforcement on speed restrictions, quote, boats are speeding and whales are dying. It's just that simple. Uh, NOAA told Reuters that in an email that its own evaluation showed 80% compliance with speed restrictions in the zones, but added that its method methodology was different from OSHA, 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 OSHANA, OSHANA. So um, there's some different, um, different. Some people say there. So some people say there's 80% compliance, and other people are saying there's 80% non-compliance, and it's. Um, yeah, so uh, Noah pointed out that ships sometimes enter zones above ten knots before slowing down, and that could affect um, that could affect uh, the methodology in the counting of it. So, boat folks, just slow down, stop hitting whales with your boats, because otherwise you're gonna kill the rest of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so just just to back here. Um, o o Oceana, Oceana, which is a nonprofit, is saying that they they found this with their research, where Noah says that um, there is actually a lot a lot of compliance. So 
there's some conflicting information there. Uh, O'Shea said it used data from Global Fishing Watch, an international nonprofit organization funded by Oceana, Oceana, in partnership with satellite image providers SkyTruth and Google to track ship speeds and locations. So, hopefully they can just, you know, figure that out. Now, I had mentioned in the previous, previous story uh, about finding new sharks in K Kentucky. Well, do you know what we can find in Kentucky? My pal who DMs the long shots is an online Dungeons and Dragons game uh, every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m.-ish on Twitch, where I, this season, am playing a Harrigan Bretland Loyalfoot, Sword Captain Retired. And, uh, you know, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, lots of fun, lots of jokes. Uh, we have people from Kentucky, uh, Canada, uh, New Zealand, and Florida, and I think a few other states in between. So it's literally an international game from crossing borders, even time zones. In fact, one person plays technically on a Thursday while we play on a Wednesday. It's fantastic. Check out The Long Shots d, &D. It's on Twitch. On Twitch. So just you just have to go to Twitch dot tv uh i don't even know the only address twitch dot tv slash the long shots dnd i'll put a link in the post below but check it out follow and if you have amazon prime you can subscribe for free once a month kicks a few bucks helps keeps the lights on for this fantastic game been doing it for I guess it'll be close to two years now. That's crazy. That's crazy. But anyways, lots of fun. Check it out. I also post the episodes on YouTube uh, and on uh, Anchor.fm. So also other places where you can listen or watch the stream. Finally, this week, folks, uh, I threw a story into my news folder and I read the title being Cocaine Seized at Sea, Worth a Million Dollars. That wasn't the title. The title was The Cocaine of the Sea, in quotes, Worth a Million Dollars, Seas in Arizona. Why, uh, why, what's that all about? Well, I will tell you. Um, in Arizona, um, the fish, the swim bladders of the Tutu Abba fish, which is an endangered fish, can be six and a half feet long, 220 pounds. The bladder, the swim bladder of that fish, uh, 91 of these swim bladders weighing 109 pounds was seized in Arizona. The total value of all those bladders is over, could be over um, $1.3 million on the black market. And they were hidden in a commercial shipment of frozen fish fillets. Uh, the incident took place in the port of entry with Mexico in San Luis, Arizona. Uh, this week uh, comes five months after, this is, this is the million, that's the second the, the largest one in the state was $2.7 million worth of swim bladders um, recovered in the second largest seizure in U.S. history. So the one, this one wasn't the biggest. There's another one five months ago, which was the second biggest. Crazy. So this fish um, can be found in the Gulf of California in Mexico. The Gulf of California is that bit of ocean between Baja, California, and Mexico proper. Uh, the Tutu Abba is valid for its high collagen content, and some believe the swim bladder, uh, the organ that helps it stay afloat, can boost fertility and circulation and skin vitality. Uh, the swim bladder of the Tutu Abba is a highly prized in traditional Chinese medicine and as a cultural Asian delicacy. That's why... You know, they can go for five to ten thousand dollars each. Uh, however, the species have been protected by the U.S. Endangered Environmental Species Act since 1979, making it illegal to possess, transport, or sell it. Trade the species is also prohibited globally under the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora due to its endangered status. But fish trade still continues. And it can sell for $5,000 on the U.S. black market and up to $10,000 per bladder, bladder of the fish, in Asian countries. As a result, it is a much sought-after species and has earned itself the name Cocaine of the Sea. Um, fishing is not only harmful to the remaining populations, but it can also inherently threat other species in the area. Uh, Tutu Abba are primarily, primarily caught 
using gill nets, a fishing method that indiscriminately catches all fish by their gills, resulting in high and then in high volumes of bycatch, like fish that they don't want to get. Uh, one species of infected uh, by this method is the Vaquita porpoise, a critically endangered species that the Wild Life Wild World Wildlife Fund has described as the world's rarest marine mammal. Um, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Office said it will continue its investigation for those involved recently in smuggling attempted protected animal organs. So, uh, yeah, cocaine of the sea, fish, fish bladder that you can eat or use for vitality, stuffed in fish fillets, seized in Arizona, worth a million dollars. Five months ago, uh, 2.7 million worth of these bladders were seized in another seizure. Crazy. It's crazy. So, I... Bleh, bleh. I, mean, I, haven't, I mean, I like fish, but fish bladders? Bleh. No thank you. No thank you. And my friends, before we wrap up today, uh, once again, you need to check out socialbee.io. They are my social media management system that I use. Use to help you post across all of your profiles. The Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, Google My Business, TikTok. It has Canva, Unsplash, Giftly integrations. You can organize your content into categories, uh, import RSS feeds, customize post free social media channels, uh, automatically generate hashtags, recycle evergreen posts, uh, set up posting schedules, and track the performance of your links. Try them out 14 days for free at socialbee.io. Uh, then after those 14 days, I'm confident you'll want to use them full-time because I know I do. And, my friends, that just about wraps up this week's Saturday Report with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor. Uh, don't forget to check out The Man Tommy Still Works, uh, uh, The Long Shots D&D, SocialBee.io. All the links are in the post below. Uh, you can find me on a variety of social media networks, Twitter, for now, Facebook, Instagram, um, Threads, Counter Social, uh, Cameo, all that Colt S. Taylor. Uh, you can, uh, sub you, you are already are likely subscribing to the podcast version of, not the podcast, the podcast of this show at anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. Uh, be sure to share that amongst all your friends and, uh, hit me up if there's a new story you think I should be covering. All right, my friends, until next time, I am, of course, your friend, Colt Sebastian Taylor, and I'll see you later.